it's that time again. It is time for Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. My name is Deborah, and I'm coming to you from here on my family farm in the foothills of the Arkansas Ozarks, where I like to do all the crafts. I knit, I crochet, I sew, I quilt, I make baskets, I make jewelry, I do cross stitch, I'm learning to do needlepoint and embroidery, I'm learning to tat and punch needle embroidery, and the list just goes on and on. Uh, I am also a university professor where I teach courses in physics and astronomy and to physics majors, to um, pre-med majors, to general education majors. Um, I kind of teach the whole spectrum of cl undergraduate classes and I also am a volunteer at our planetarium and I am a very active advocate for women in STEM. Um, and last but not least, I am a farmer. I'm a third generation family farm farm owner here on my land, which is 170 acres in the foothills of the Ozarks. I raise grass-fed beef cattle. I raise horses. I have heritage poultry. I have show quality rabbits. And I have a retirement herd of miniature horses, miniature donkeys, donkeys, a miniature mule named Pumpkin who thinks she rules the roost, and Princess Penny the Potbelly Pig. And as you can tell from my sweet little furry co-host Willie here, I am fur kid mom to 13 dogs, 7 indoor cats, and an undetermined number of outside barn cats. So if any or of all of that sounds interesting to you, come on along on episode number 51 of Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. I want to welcome all of our new and returning viewers. I sure am glad you're here. I hope you find something that you like. I try to put time stamps if there's something that you're not interested in so that you can skip on ahead to the things that you might want to know more about. Um, but hopefully you'll find a little bit of all of it interesting, but welcome regardless. Um, if you're looking for me on social media, you can find my farm Facebook page. It's the same as my YouTube channel name. It's Buckthorn Farms. You can also find me on Instagram and on Ravelry as Doc Firewoman. And uh, there is also a Ravelry group for the podcast where you can find out about make-alongs and giveaways and just some general chit-chat. It's a great group. Uh, lots of knowledge in that group. So I encourage you to go over there and check it out and be a post, you know, actively post. We like to have conversations and talk to people. It's been a little bit quiet because I know it's a busy time of year for everybody. But I want to make sure that we keep everything, everybody jazzed up as we head into the holidays. Because I know the holidays can be challenging for some people. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter as Doc Firewoman. But I will warn you, I'm a fairly left-leaning, socially liberal Democrat. And Twitter is where I go to town with my political points of view. I keep it kind of to a dull roar other places. But I do speak out about issues that I think are important as far as social justice and I don't think social justice warrior is a dirty word if you do we might not be in the right place sounds like we've got a conversation going on in the other room about one of the beds too the dogs are having a discussion in there but anyway so uh, do find us there and go over and check out our make-alongs we do have several make-alongs that will be winding down here as we approach the end of the year uh, we do have one that is running until March 15th so I'll talk about that one first um, Logan from Leon Alexander Yarns has published a pie shawl pattern and I am running a make along for it until pie day which is March the 15th so check out um, his pattern and we're doing a make along for that it's a big shawl but you know it's be fun and it'll be uh, there's lots of interesting challenges in it so I encourage you to check that out um, I've, but I do have a link for the pattern in the Ravelry discussion group. Now, other make-alongs that are winding down as we get toward the end of the year here, we have the Farmer's Almanac make-along, where I post information and tidbits about the different things in the month. Um, some of it gleaned from the Farmer's Almanac, some of it gleaned from other places. So you can uh, post uh, anything that you are inspired by, for that month. So right now we're working on the month of November. Each month I draw for a pattern prize and then I have I have got an FO thread open where you can put your FOs in and I will draw for physical prize from the FO thread at the end of the year. Okay, so that is running till the year end. We also have the Kitter Getter Done where if you like to buy kits like I like to buy kits and you need a reason to make up those kits instead of hoarding them like a dragon sitting on gold, 
uh, you can enjoy the join the kit or get her done, which I'll also be running next year because I keep buying kits. So um, we'll be running that again, but any kit, it can be a shawl kit, it can be a cross stitch kit, it can be a basket making kit, jewelry making kit, I don't care. Just the idea is if it came in a kit form, whether it was a sock kit or a shawl kit or whatever, if you did not have to gather the materials or the most of the materials to make it, that qualifies to me as a kit. Um, also, we have the Never Have I Ever, so a new skill, a new technique, you try knitting your first sweater, you try making your first pair of socks, you try sewing, or whatever, I don't care, as long as it's a craft related thing, and if it's the first time you've ever tried it, then go on over there and tell us about it, that is a participation only uh, chatter thread that I periodically draw prizes for. Uh, Rocky Mountain Penny was kind enough to donate some prizes, so some pattern prizes for that. So uh, those should have gone out to the people that won them. Um, and thank you to the people who have, over the course of the year, donated different pattern prizes. I would try to name you all, but I would probably leave somebody out and then I'd feel bad. So I've already been called out once by voice to text changing ice pick to something a little less than polite that had to do with a pig and its posterior. I don't know how it got there. That's not a phrase I would ever put to get those two words together. But anyway, ice pick was what I meant to say. Um, but anyway, um, we're, we're doing that. Go on over there and join the chatter thread. Then we also have the Creature Feature. It's the fourth quarter of Creature Feature, which is being co-hosted by a Crochet and Whovian podcast. So you can double dip your entries. And right now we are doing Mythical and Magical Beasts. So uh, I've seen some unicorns and some trolls. I am working on a dragon right now. I'm not probably going to show it because I just have his back legs and he's one of his front legs made. But uh, by next week or next time I podcast, which will probably be in two weeks, I should have more to show you on that. Uh, but mythical creatures. Now you don't have to follow the theme. You can make any amigurumi that you want to, but you get a double entry if you follow the theme. So quarterly prizes or pattern prizes, but there is an FO thread open for that for year end prizes as well. And then last but not least, and I am making some progress finally on my big shawl, is I like big shawls and I cannot lie, co-hosted by a historian knits, Vanessa, and her family is coming to visit. Yay! They're coming in next Tuesday to visit me, and we're going to go to my local yarn shop, and we're going to go eat Vietnamese food, and we're going to go visit animals, or they're going to come here and visit the animals. So I'm very excited to get to meet her in person. Uh, we have been friends online for quite a while now, but it'll be really nice to finally meet her in person, and Amelia and her husband as well. Um, so I'm very excited about that. So uh, that is our make-alongs. Now I do want to make you aware of a couple of things. There is a pattern swap sign up. I kept it open. Uh, it will be open until December 1st. If you would like to sign up to swap patterns, instead of doing a physical swap, I thought it would be easier just to do a pattern swap. Uh, I know that you can do the get your pattern wishes granted or your Ravelry wishes granted or whatever, but if you would like to do a pattern swap, just go to my Ravelry group and sign up there. We've only got five people right now counting me, so I'd like to have a few more people. Um, you know, it, I'll, it, between five and ten dollars, it doesn't have to be anything super expensive. Uh, so I encourage you to go over there and sign up for that. Um, okay, I'm also going to have a new giveaway this month. Um, I'm going to leave this open until December 1st, and it is uh, Tristan from Dragon Horde Yarns' newest pattern, the boot weather sweater, and I'll put a picture of it up here. It's a very nice, comfy, oversized colorwork sweater, and I want to give away two copies of it uh, on December 1st because 25% of all the proceeds through December, I believe 26th, goes to the organization in the backlog and in the backlog is an organization that has helped trying to process uh, DNA kits from women or anyone I shouldn't just say women because it does happen to men but anyone who has been a victim of a sexual assault they are trying to end or trying to get these DNA kits processed because if you are brave enough to come forward which takes a lot of bravery to come forward and go through the litigate go through the legal process to try to have your attacker um, face justice, then you should not have to sit and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait for the evidence from your case to be processed. So in the backlog is trying to um, help 
you know, supply of funds and supply and ability to take care of that. So I feel very strongly about that helping that cause out. So I want to don't, I'm going to give away two copies of the boot weather sweater pattern uh, on December 1st. So I will open a thread in Ravelry um, and I will put, uh, I don't know what the writing prompt will be. Well, don't worry, it will not be personal or anything like that. But uh, I will put something in there where you can enter and, um, and I would, you know, and then I will give away two copies of that pattern. And I'll tell you what, if you enter, the chances are pretty good that you're going to win because my Ravelry group is still pretty small. And so statistically, you have a good chance of winning. So go check it out. <laughs> Oh, also too, I'm also going to give away another pattern. I'm going to give this away. Um, I'm going to close the thread on December 1 also. And this is for Jessica Willfall, Willfall's uh, snowflakes pattern. All right. She is doing a snowflake, sort of a snowflake crochet along. It is um, called the Snowfall Crochet Along. It begins December 1st. There are six patterns in the collection, and you get six free patterns if you purchase the pattern collection. Um, it is a series of beautiful, tiny, the little delicate thread crocheted snowflakes. So I would like to also give away a copy of that pattern as well. Or, well, we'll do two. We'll do two of those two. That's just nice, right? So it's it's the holiday season. Let's be let's be festive. So I'll give away two copies of that ebook as well. So um, I would I will put a prompt up for that. It's called the Snowfall Crochet Along. Begins December first. It's thread crochet with steels, but you could make it bigger if you wanted to, and it would be fine. So uh, I'm going to also give away a copy, two copies of that pattern as well. So hopefully you can go over and check that out. Also, so go sign up for the pattern swap and the pattern giveaways and tell a friend. Have them come on over and, and join in the fun, okay? So now we're going to move on, and I've got some finished objects, y'all. And I've got one that it may not be a big one, but it's a doozy. <laughs> Okay, so some of my finished objects have already gone to their new home, so I'll have to just share photographs with you. And one of them is a surprise, but I think the package has gotten there, and I hope that she's going to open it tonight. So by the time this comes out, she should have already seen it. So, Nancy, if you hadn't opened your box yet, when you get to this one part, you can't watch, okay? Okay. All right. So the first thing that I want to show you is I finished my little cross stitch. Yay! It only took me 20 years. <laughs> I started this in 1999 when my mother was having heart surgery at Baptist Hospital in Little Rock. And I was carrying it with me as I would go down there and sit and wait with her or sit in her room while she was recovering from that surgery. And then it got packed up and it got moved three times. And now it is here and it is done. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I picked it back up this year. I probably got it maybe I had maybe a third of it done. I didn't have any of the animals done. I just had part of the person done. So I finished finished it all, did all the little back stitching and it is good to go. I need to press it. I haven't pressed it yet. I need to need to press it and then decide how I'm going to finish it out. I think I may make it a little pillow of a thing. Uh, a little wall hanging type pillow. I have in mind somebody that I might give it as a gift to, but I told them they couldn't have it till after the fair. <laughs> anyway, so that's my first finished object. My second finished object is um, I, I finished 10 hats and my friend Carol gave me 10 or 12 and I took them over to the warming tree and it was a very good time to do it because about a week and a half ago we had single digit wind chill temperatures um we had a period we had an arctic blast come through which was very unusual for november the temperatures were in the teens our highs were in the upper 20s and 30s and that is more like january type temperatures for us not november and we even had just a little spitting of snow um so the, you know, the stu they weren't going to start the warming tree until November the 18th, which was this past Monday, and that was the week before that it was doing that. So they went ahead and started giving it away, and they were cleaning them out. So I came in with those hats, and she was so glad 
to see us. So I'll put a picture of our pile of hats that we made here. It was just a, I just used some bulky yarn from my stash and then Carol is, um, Carol substitute teaches a lot at Clarksville and so she sits and works on hats while she's substitute teaching. So, um, she, um, gave me those to donate, but I have started a new collection. Uh, this is some more of that homespun. I think it's homespun stripes, and this is a colorway called Tudor. And um, I am going to start a collection to donate, do another donation for the holidays. So I've got this one done, and I'm almost done with the second one that you'll see in works in progress. Uh, this is great meeting crochet work because I don't really have to pay attention once I get past the increase section. Um, and the hats make up really quickly. So I'm going to make a few a few more hats to donate for the holiday season because there are people in our community that don't have any family and they don't have a lot of Christmas. So I thought that this would be a nice little Christmas cheer project. And I went by to get my nails done. Hand, foot, and mouth is a, the gift that keeps on giving. My feet look awful because now the blisters are all sloughing slough, off. And uh, my hands still look terrible from the blisters, but they're, you know, where, they, where they're peeling away. And I had a couple of nails that I needed to let grow out a little bit. But I went by today to get my nails done, and being, it right, being as it's right before a holiday, there was a lot of people in there. So I just, just got to go with what you got, right? So there's my hat. Another hat that I finished is I finished my uh, School of Magic Amigurumi make-along from Irene Stang Strange and Ar Irina Arali. I finished my witch's hat. Yay! <laughs> I finished my witch hat. So, I haven't done the little creatures, the little bits and pieces yet, but I did get this done. And I think I'm going to start working on the little amigurumi parts, kind of a stash busting things. Um, so I did get this done. So that's all finished. I've got to weave the ends in. I crocheted wire into it so it has a stiffer brim here so it would stand up a little bit more on its own. But I am very pleased with how that worked out. I think it's really super cute. <laughs> Halloween all year long, right? <laughs> Okay, so, um, and you can see behind me here, I've already showed the shawl, but um, I put fringe on my Malibu shawl. So I took the, I was going to make it multicolored, and then I thought, no, I think that'll distract too much. So I actually took the uh, teal color that was the uh, Creative DK, the Crea, like Crea Baby Alpaca, that's the alpaca yarn, and I made my fringe out of that, and I wore it to our last day of our Big Magic book group because I had been working on it uh, while we were in book group, and I liked the idea, we've talked about this before, about sympathetic magic and those magical stitches that you make and the energy that you put in things when you work on them when you're around people. So I took it to our last day of our Big Magic book group and wore it so that it would be like a full circle uh, thing so I was very happy about that. So those are my finished objects for this week. And so now we're going to move on. And oh no, I'm lying. I forgot to tell you about the secret surprise finished objects. Okay. Well, one of them's not a secret surprise. The first one is I made Tommy's fruit basket. I had showed you the kit before. I'm going to put a picture of it in here where she's got it already filled up with fruit. This was a basket kit from NC Basket Works. And it's called... Um, I think it's Judy's Fruit Basket or Judy's Two-Tiered Basket. It's a fruit basket, and the bottoms of each basket ha are wooden or solid wooden bottoms. And then you fill in around the bot base and, and weave the baskets, and then you put the, the stand in it. So uh, I finished that for her uh, and gave it to her. So that's, that's another finished object that I have. And then the next one is the super secret surprise. So Nancy, if you haven't opened your box yet, you need to leave <laughs> for about... Oh, three minutes. Okay. Are you gone? Okay. I made Nancy a farmer's market basket. It is also a kit from NC Basket Works, and she had wanted me to make her a basket, and she was my swap partner for um, the VKN swap, so I ordered the kit, and I made her a basket. Now, the trick was, was getting the ba a box the right size <laughs> to put the basket in. The basket this way was, you could find a box, but the handle's sticking up, and boy, I hope that handle made it all the way to Iowa in one piece, because I wrapped it good and stuffed stuff around it, so hopefully it made it. 
But um, this was a kit from NC Basket Works. It's very beautiful. The black is actually um, accented is uh, weavable paper. It's very stiff um, wired paper that you weave uh, into the pattern of the basket. So I thought it was really pretty. In fact, I'm probably going to order myself that kit because I think I really liked it. It's a nice size market basket, so I hope she's happy with it. Uh, when she opens it. So we'll see. Hopefully it made it in one piece. I'm all worried about it now getting crushed. <laughs> I had to use one of my boxes from last year's Super Science Saturday and it had little space rocket ship stickers all over and I took it into the post office and they're like, okay. <laughs> oh well, who cares? But anyway, so that's my super secret surprised finished object. So that's all my finished objects. Uh, I did. I had done some sewing for my friend Carol. She had asked me to. Uh, she's going to crochet some kitchen towel toppers, and so I had sewed. Um, I, she doesn't enjoy sewing, so I took the towels and cut them in half and just hemmed them for her. So I just stick a little picture of the stack of towels in there. So I have been doing stuff uh, while I've been off. I've been pretty productive. So um, it's nice to feel like you've got some energy to get some stuff done. So anyway, so now now we're done and we can move on to work in progress. Okay, so works in progress uh, this week. First thing I'll show you, I'm just making another hat. This is another one of those just sort of a recipe for a basic beanie um, out of this um, lion, or this um, lion brand homespun stripes. Okay, so um, I'm working on another beanie. This was some scrap that I had left over from the first one, one of the first ones that I made. So I wanted to use it up. I'm trying to clear out some stash here. So that'll be a nice warm beanie for someone. I went down to Adkins today to work with the GT kids and I'm, we're still working on teaching them how to crochet. So I had that with me and was showing them. And they're like, how can you do that so fast? I'm like, because I practice. <laughs> I practice and practice. And you don't get good at it overnight. You have to practice. So um, anyway, so we I've got that. Then uh, I restarted my undercurrent socks. So here in my bag from the Knickknack Knits, I won from Knickknack Knits podcast. It's got the pretty moths on it. Um, I restarted my undercurrent socks by Kirsty from Grenade Creations. Uh, she is having to knit along for these socks. It runs through the end of November. So there's that. And um, I'm back past where I frogged them from. So now they look much nicer. They are a nicer size, tension-wise. Plus the pattern is showing up correctly on them. I don't know how well you can see that so you can see the pretty pattern that she's got on them there because now i'm reading the chart correctly for being a lefty knitter okay um this oh and you got my little progress keeper there from charmed and dangerous it's a little gingerbread narwhal <laughs> oh let's get it where you can see and it's sweet okay so um i'm back actually beyond where i frogged them from so i'm real pleased with that i'm knitting those out of a rainbow sock blank from lamb woman knits off of etsy um, and it is, let's see, the tag is in here, I believe, somewhere, somewhere, the tag is, here it is. It is her smooth sock, and it's just 7525. It's a sock blank from Lamb Woman Knits. Okay, so, um, yeah, got those, working on those a little bit. Then... Uh, I haven't really put much more on to either my hat or my Calaveras shawl, so I won't show those tonight. And like I said, my dragon, all I've got to show on him are his front, his back legs and his, front, his one front leg. So I won't show that this week either. But I will show the thing that I have mostly been working on, and that's in my April 9 Designs alpacas bag here. I'm going to put my pattern back in my socks first. The thing that I've been the most, um, I guess, monogamous, if you want to call it that, on is my Changes Shawl by the Knitting Expat. So the Changes Shawl came out in 2018, and I've had this pattern since then, but I really wanted to get it, I really thought it was a neat shawl, a neat looking shawl, and I really wanted one. So I bought, had bought the yarn right after the pattern came out, and it has just been sitting in my stash since then. So there's what it looks like. 
okay and it's the way it's knit it's knit modular and then you have to pick up stitches and i know not everybody's a fan of picking up stitches and i'm not really a fan of doing it but i'm also not a fan of having 700 stitches on my needles at a time sometimes sometimes i don't mind that but sometimes after you've done that you kind of want it and i'm in the middle of a row but anyway so i have finished the center section and now i've picked up around the outside and i'm doing the um the the section with the contrasting minis now i'm knitting the alternate version because being a loose knitter i'm kind of worried about running out of my gray yarn so i'm knitting the slightly shorter i think she said it makes a difference like in two to three inches overall in the length of the shawl so that's not that much but i've knit i finished the center part and because i'm in the middle of a row i can't really show it here but i finished the center section you can see my little progress keeper that's where i was at the last time i podcast and it's a little a little christmas pudding from uh, charmed and dangerous also who i kept missing her last two shop updates i wanted one of those frog fox not frogs foxes so darn bad in one of those polar bear cupcakes and it was during riding practice and i was doing everything i could to, to order from her etsy shop while i was riding a horse i'm sitting there you know trotting along and holding my phone and trying to <laughs> and by the time i hit checkout i'd been cart jacked <sighs> such is the life of the physicist farm gal you don't always get the cute progress keepers because you got to ride your horse sometimes and that's probably okay but anyway, so uh, I love how these neon minis are working up in this gray. Both of these, you know, all of these yarns are from Kimmery Knit Knacks. This gray is a colorway called Steel. And then um, th this is just one of her neon mini packs. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go back uh, the other direction with my mini. So I'm going to have, I'm going to do like a, a primary and secondary rainbow because, you know, the colors are reversed on a, the, the secondary bow compared to the primary bow. So I'm going to start the next series of five colors with the purple and then do the blue and the yellow and the orange and the pink. So I think that that will be really pretty. I love, I really hadn't fully appreciated how popping those colors are until I held it up for y'all to see. But anyway, so that is my changes shawl. So you can kind of see the full extent of it or not really because I'm in the middle of a row. But anyway, you can kind of see it there. It reminds me of the 1980s. <laughs> And have bright colored everything so um, anyway so yeah so there's that I'm I, that's what I've mostly been working on it's a very easy knit y'all it's an enjoyable knit it seems like it goes fast because the rows are short so I would highly recommend it to anybody considering making a big shawl because it does qualify for our big shawl knit along okay the last thing that i will show and i think i got back here without the picture of this thing but i'll try to remember to stick a picture of it here um a crocheted simplicity had a free pattern for some really cute little uh, gingerbread kitchen towels and so i am uh, crocheting the little gingerbread men kitchen towels um for miss betsy for christmas because she has all these gingerbread men things in her kitchen and if you remember last year, I made her an apron and I was trying to decide what to do for her this year. And I came to realize there was no way I was going to get that cross, those cross stitched pillowcases done in time for Christmas because I hadn't started them yet. So I thought, well, here's my chance to make her something handmade. So I ordered the yarn and um, got it in and have decided to make these for her. And then I ordered enough yarn to make myself <laughs> self some too. Then she also came out like three or four days later with a really cute set of snowman kitchen towels. Now the gingerbread men were a free downloadable pattern off of her blog. And then the, uh, and then the snowman pattern were actually written into the blog. So I went ahead and paid the $3 for the snowman pattern so I could print it out easier and stuff. So um, I just started those last night. So you see how quick that is working up there. So I got those going on for Miss Betsy for Christmas there. So, okay. So I think that that is all of my works in progress. So I'm going to come back and tell you about a couple of future crafting. Okay, y'all, um, I've got a couple of future craftings here that I'll show you. The first one is, and I've showed this before, this is a pattern that I got from my friend Jackie back when we were in graduate school. 
and it's uh, one of those easy cut quilt uh, patterns and she made a really beautiful one of these with whites and like pine green uh, Christmas trees on it and ever since I saw that and that's been 20 something years ago I've wanted to make it so um, I keep saying I've got all these quilts that I want to make and I, I now have envy of one of my fellow faculty members because she has a long arm quilting machine and that's on my list when I get the big bills around here paid off which should be within that I've got one that'll be paid off in like two months and then by the end of the year another big one will be paid off I may put me some money back and buy myself a long arm machine because I would have room in my den to set it up and I have really really wanted one because I've got all these quilt tops and y'all I hate quilting I hate it I love making tops I love the geometry and fixing the colors and doing all that but when it comes to the quilting I'm out I don't want to do it um so if I got one of those then hey I could quilt so but anyway so I've got this and I don't have any fabric picked out for it at all but it would be fun to shop for beautiful green fabrics and now that I know where the magic special fabric store is in Batesville uh, maybe next year I'll go up there and buy the fabric for this and actually make it so we'll see but anyway, so, um, yeah, and I've got both of those special rulers, or no, that's not a special ruler, but then that triangle ruler, I've got that, um, because, you know, they, they make things easier by having you buy all the gizmos to, to cut the special rectangles or triangles with, so, uh, anyway, um, the other thing I need to do is I need to finish a couple of these bags. I made, uh, these bags for gifts for people, and all I need to do to finish them is I need to sew the channel where the uh, cording goes and then I want to get some of those stoppers to put on the end of these cords I should have got them today while I was in town I didn't think about it but uh, these are gifts for somebody or two different people and I need to get those done because you know it's the time's ticking 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 um, okay then in shave them to save them news I am going to make um, and this is one of those my Molly Klein design bags, little rainbow narwhals. Uh, I'm going to make the, I think it's called the Wordsworth, Wadsworth, the Wadsworth towel. It's a mosaic color work, if I remember right. Yeah, it's mosaic color work. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And um, I'm going to use some of my yarn from To Shave Them To Save Them. This is... Um, Lester long wool yarn and it is from I forget oh the Rosefield farm the Rosefield farm and I believe Shirley picked this up for me at Maryland sheep and wool I don't think it was Laura I think it was Shirley I got her I had to pick up these two colors and I thought that those would look pretty in that mosaic color work cowl so uh, they are they're you can tell they're not you know merino but they're not itchy to me so I think they'll be just fine for a cow. And I'm not super duper sensitive to that kind of stuff anyway. So um, I'm going to um, use those in the Wadsworth cow. And that'll be one of my shave them to save them projects. And the next thing I'm going to show, let's get this straightened up here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show is also a shave them to save them uh, project as well. I'm going to put these all back up here. Oops, try to keep everything straightened up. Oh. Whoops. Well, Willie, I can't hang on to it, son. What's going on? There we go. Okay. My legs are sore because I rode flame yesterday for about an hour and 15 minutes and we did a bunch of trot work and a bunch of canter work and my, <laughs> my legs are telling me about it today. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is another shave them to save them. Uh, project. If you remember, I gave away copies of Maria from Ninja Chickens, the fleece flight shawl, and I know Shirley made one. Um, Maria is a friend of mine. I consider her to be a good friend from across the miles. And this pattern supported the Livestock Conservancy, which I'm all about that. Plus, it's the perfect thing for Shave Them to Save Them, the Shave Them to Save Them program. So, um, I have picked out some uh, rustic wools. Most of them are shave them to save them, and then one of them is a gift wool that was gifted to me by Miss Mary, and so I want to use that. Um, so, I've got some options here, and maybe y'all can help me make my mind up. So, um, this is the Jacob that I showed last 
time from the farm up in Mountain View. Then this is a Left Hand Wool Company. This is Clune Forest. This is their Clune Forest. I don't think I showed that. I don't think I had that yet. So I've got those two for sure in there. Then um, this is from, this was, Laura picked this up for me from Maryland Sheep and Wool. This is Cotswold from uh, Heritage, where is it from? The Ross Farm. This is Cotswold, so I definitely want to use that in there. So that's what we're building on. Then I've got this beautiful piece of Shetland wool. Now this is not Shave em to Save em yarn, but this was a gift from a very, good, very dear friend to me, Miss Mary, and this is Shetland wool. So I think that pop of red will look really good in there. So now I need two more. So what I've got is I've got this Lincoln long wool um, from, I forget, oh, the farm name's not on here, but I've got it in my booklet. This is a lot more rustic feeling, you know. I mean, these, these kind of are, but this is definitely more rustic feeling. It's a nice light gray. I've got two skeins of it, but I don't have to use them both. So what I've got so far is this. Okay, now here are my options. I could use this and just repeat the light gray or I could save this for, for something else. Or in my acquisition, pre-acquisition fun here that I'll show you, I ordered, this is also not Shave em to Save em yarn. I did order some Shave em to Save em from these people, but this is a um, sort of a rare breed yarn. This is from Phoenix Fiber Farm and this is Perindale wool. So it's more of a brown gray. So it's a little different than the gray that I've already got. So I think that is a nice combination. But I also have the option of using this. Now this is Tunis. And this is um, from Solitude Wool. Laura picked this up as well. And the, the red in there matches the red in here pretty well. So I also have the option of doing this. Okay. Or I could take out the Lincoln and, and use those two skeins together and do something like that. Whoops. Oh, can't get them all hold of them. Do something like that. Okay. I think, though, what my best option is going to be is, um, let's see, can't read here. I think my best option may be to leave the Lincoln in there and do like that, and then just have the red as like a pop. But I also have, and I think that this would work as well, um, I have this yarn from, this is from Redgate Farms. Um, oh, and this Tunis was actually from Beaucaire Farm in Purcellville, but it was distributed by, by Solitude Wool. This was also from Maryland Sheep and Wool, which was distributed by Solitude Wool, but it's from Redgate Farm in Leesburg, Virginia. This is uh, Caracool, okay, and it is dyed with Dame's Rocket. It's got a nice um, halo to it. This stuff loves to felt is my only hold up with this, but I could take, again, take the Lincoln out and use those two skeins together and have something like, let's see if I can get a hold of all these, that. That's kind of nice. That might be pretty. I don't know, maybe this and that blue are too much the similar tone, but I don't know. I'm going to have to play around with it a little bit and see. Well, you can tell them apart. I think that may be what I do. I don't know just yet. So, um, but anyway, I'm going to make a fleece plot, and that's going to be what I start on, even though I've got a million other things. Uh, reach down here and get this. A million other things started. Um, that's what I'm going to start on when I finish my changes shawl. So, right now, I may kind of lean toward going this route. So, I'll have those four, and then the Jacob, and then the bright red Shetland. Oops. I knocked my frog off. 
All right, but anyway, so I don't know. Or not, I, might, I don't know. I might put the Lincoln back in there for a lighter. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know just yet. I've got some time to think about it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, let me put those away. But what um and i don't want to get to acquisitions just yet well yeah we'll, we'll move on to acquisitions all right we're going to move on to acquisitions because i've kind of already showed you the one the perindale wool from daphne the sheep's name was daphne and this is from phoenix fiber farm and they are in um maryland okay and this is not a shave them to save them yarn but it is an unusual breed and it's locally grown so i wanted to do that but i also ordered from them and let me get <laughs> back down in here to it all right uh, i got i did get the reason i found them is i did get a shave them to save them yarn from them i got this this is some sport weight gulf coast native Okay, this is some sport weight Gulf Coast native from Phoenix Fiber Farm. All right, and um, it is a shave them to save them yarn. So this will put me another sticker in my book. Now this is sport weight, so I might make just a simple cowl out of this. Something, it would look pretty with something with cables because it's got a, it would show them off, I think, really well. So um, I might do that. I might put those two together. Although, now that I'm looking at it, boy, wouldn't those two be pretty together? Hmm. That would still be two shave them to save them yarns. And then I could put, then I could put the Lincoln back in with the other. Anyway, so we'll see. I've got some time to think about it. But I want to start getting my shave them to save them projects going because I want to get my prizes. You know, I'm very motivated. But what are you into? Willie, what have you got? Come here. Willie. You don't even know. Okay, fine. Uh, but anyway, so those that was an acquisition, and I actually just got that in the mail today um, from um, Phoenix Fiber Farm. So they are on Etsy, Phoenix Fiber Farm, and they're also on Instagram and everywhere. You can find them in all the usual um, social media places if you want to see more about what they have. Um, let's see. Let me... Um, put this in a safe place so that I don't lose my sticker before I get it put in my passport. Oh, well, let's just put it in the passport now. <laughs> let's just put it in the passport now. So I'm actually making some progress on my passport. I've got uh, Clone Forest and Black Welsh Mountain already. And I've got Lester Longwool and Lincoln already. And um, then I've got uh, Tunis. Okay. And uh, let's see what else have I got here. I've got Gulf Coast Native will go in the critically endangered section. So let's just put my sticker in right now. How about let's just take care of that right now before we forget. So um, we will put that on there. So there's my Gulf Coast Native sticker happily in its home. There we go. All right. And then um, I've also got... Um, oh, and there's the Jacob American and Caracool American. Got those done. So, got that done. So, I've got, let's see, how many is that? One, two, three, four. Oh, Cotswold. I didn't show that one either. So, there's four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, let's see, seven, eight. Nine. Nine. Nine breeds in my booklet. So, uh, let's see how many that leaves me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Do they have recovery in here? Yes. So, thirteen. Nine down, thirteen to go. <laughs> So I'm making I'm making progress, making progress. I would eventually like to get examples of all of them, although I believe one of them is a hair sheep, and so I don't know um, what exactly I would do with that. But I'll see what other people are doing. Oh, it's unavailable. The micron count is unavailable. Okay. Oh, actually, the Saint Croix 
the Barbados black belly and the Wiltshire horn are all hair sheep. So I'll have to figure out something to do with those. So anyway, so there you go. All right. And that is still, that program is running through 2021. So there's still plenty of time uh, to get in on it. I might give away another passport enrollment um, next year sometime because I think it's a neat program and I like the idea of preserving heritage livestock. Okay, so um, another acquisition that I have is um, I got to look and I missed the last two installments of the West Wing Yarn Club from Stress Knits and I was really upset about that <laughs> because I like completion of things. You know, my house may be chaos and, and everything and my farm is run down, but I like thing I like sets of things. I like to have a complete set. And so one night I just got to flipping back through her um, Instagram and I saw where she said, Oh, I'm gonna be putting them in the shop. So I had to go get them. The last two colorways are here. Um, this one is called the Jackal. And um, that has a reference to CJ singing, lip syncing to the Jackal. Uh, in the episode six meetings before lunch after they got their Supreme Court nominee confirmed and Then this one is two cathedrals and if you're a West Wing viewer, you know what that episode is about um, So we won't go into that. I don't want to spoil anything for you but two cathedrals and uh, That's probably one of the most powerful episodes of that show. I'll just be honest so, um, anyway, so there's those two. They're a nice dark gray with some, this one's got some multicolored speckles, and then this is more like of a dark gray tonal. So, a lot of potential there. So, I'm glad now I have a complete set of, I've already used one of the colorways, uh, four red lights, um, in my Just Feel Better shawl by Kalisha Ryan. But I've still got the other two. Uh, one of them is Sudden Arboreal Stop. And the other one is um, Like the Cracker. Which is about uh, Gail the Goldfish. So anyway, um, I've got these. I might pull them out and look to see how these four look together. And decide to put them all together in something. But we'll see. So I've got those. Then, um, I, I'll show you the last thing that I'll show. Well, the two last three things that I purchased. Um, this is not crafting related, but I, I have mentioned before that I collect the Brayer Beautiful Breeds ornaments. And this was this year's ornament. This is the Fjord horse. Okay, so that'll go on my horse Christmas tree when I put it up next week. And I am feeling motivated to decorate for Christmas this year. Got the um, wreath making party is coming up. So i uh, got to get decorated up before that. Then I went to the natural food store today to pick up some tea because I was out and uh, I wanted to, to also get some tea to send to someone as a gift. And so I picked up um, myself a couple of new teas and one of the ones I got was this. It's uh, organic chocolate orange. Miss Shirley was laughing at me telling about chocolate oranges at Christmas time, but I'm sure some of y'all are familiar with those. So I got chocolate orange tea and it is very good. That's what I've been drinking here while we're visiting. And then while I was walking around, um, Kaz from the uh, We So and So podcast has the most beautiful skin. And she was talking about her skincare regime. And, you know, living out here on this farm, my skin kind of takes a hit. Excuse me, I dropped something here. Ugh. My skin kind of takes a, a hit. And, you know, I, I, most of the time I'm not worried about it. But I would like my skin to be in good shape. I mean, I know that, um, you know, I'm not particularly vain in that sense. Although when I do get spots on my face, I get a little bit vain. So, um, but I was walking around and I just wanted something where my skin felt nourished. And in the winter time, my skin gets dry. And so I found this kit. It's, um, a skincare kit and it's got frankincense oil, which I know is really good for you, for, your, um, wrinkles and things like that. Uh, frankincense hydrazole, which is like a, um, a facial toner and then argan oil and I was already using argan oil on my skin anyway uh, especially on my hands and my feet after I had hand foot and mouth with the dry skin um, so I bought this little kit it was on a sale this month so I picked this little kit up and thought I would try it out um, so I'll let y'all know <laughs> okay um, you know I fully expect to wake up tomorrow morning and look like you know a young um, Christy Brinkley 
right? Or even Christy Brinkley now would be fine too. So, um, but I participated in the um, project bag swap. Uh, many of y'all did too. It was hosted by Candy Shop Yarns and Molly Klein Designs. And I was paired with a lovely lady, lady named June who lives in Texas. And she spoiled me rotten. These are the two bags that she sent me. Aren't they beautiful? She sews, and so I was very intimidated <laughs> about sending her a bag. I actually purchased her bag, but she said she loved it, so I was really tickled. But she's also a quilter and a sewer, and we've hit it off online, and, and it's fun to make new friends. So she sent me a really sweet card, and then she had gone to the Houston Quilt Festival and was telling me all about that. So she sent me a whole bunch of little goodies in, uh, in there. Uh, there's this beautiful little notebook that's a quilted cover notebook that's made by uh, Jezebel Crafts. Okay, isn't that beautiful? This little sweet little notebook here to write everything in. Um, and then these a little pouch. Can't ever have too many little notions pouches. And then this I thought was cool. It's an eco-friendly Swedish dish cloth. It replaces sponges and paper towels. It's made of 70% cellulose and 30% cotton. It's very absorbent uh, and you can wash and dry it. Or put it in the dishwasher. So I think that's really awesome. So I, I need to find out where that came from and get me some more of those. Oh, there. Three Bluebirds. Threebluebirds.com is where that came from. So I think that's cool. I like eco-friendly stuff, definitely. Um, then she also, I mean, she really went <laughs> over, oh, uh, she really, really spoiled me. I was very overwhelmed by her kindness. She sent me some tea from Tea Embassy, hot cinnamon spice, because she knows I like hot things. <laughs> She sent me this adorable little bag, and I think I knocked the tag off of this, but it's a sweet little drawstring bag that was she picked up at one of the festivals. She sent me this really cool little book called The Goddess Within. You know, I love that. I like, and I just opened it to a very appropriate page by Mae Sarton. Don't deprive me of my age. I have earned it. <laughs> Yes, universe, I'm listening. And um, then she sent me um, some yarn. She sent me some, oh, and she sent me a magnet. And she and she wanted magnets from Arkansas, so I found her some really cute Arkansas magnets and sent them to her. And there's some candy in there. But she also sent me some yarn, which I thought was awesome. This is um, Pandia's Jewels hand-dyed yarn, and, and this is a colorway called Bramble. And this is fingering white yarn. It is, let's see if I can read the content. It is 7525, beautiful colorway called Bramble. Isn't that pretty? It's a beautiful purple. And I'm looking at it with this West Wing yarn going, hmm, <laughs> those kind of look good together. And then she said, I think you would appreciate this yarn. She sent me one of her Tits Out Collective colorways. This is from, um, Desert Panda Fiber Arts, and this is a colorway called Vegas Showgirls. That is gorgeous. <laughs> I love that so much. She said, I had a feeling that you would appreciate that. I'm like, you are so right. <laughs> anyway, so thank you, Miss June. I adore these gifts, and I hope you were as happy with yours as I am with mine, because this was just amazing. So let me put all that back together, because I like to keep everything together. Um, I did have another purchase here. I purchased some more eyes from Suncatcher Craft Eyes. Uh, it's kind of hard to show them in the bag, and I don't really want to open them up too much. But they had a mermaid collection of eyes, and I'm making a sea dragon. So there is a set of dragon eyes in here, if I can get them. Of course, they're the ones that are turned around the wrong way to see. But um, there we go. I ordered the mermaid collection because I'm, I want to make a Kelpie, I want to make a Nessie, and I'm making a water dragon. And I thought, well, there, three sets of eyes. And then I went ahead and ordered the dragon eyes for my other three elemental dragons. The fire dragon, the air dragon, and the earth dragon. So, that'll motivate me to get them made. So, yeah. Alrighty. Now, the last thing I will share, and this was a very sweet gift from, from Nancy. Now, Nancy was not my swap partner. Miss Shirley was my swap partner. And I haven't gotten into that box yet, Miss Shirley, but I'm, I'm going to on December 1st. Don't you worry. <laughs> but Nancy was kind enough to send me a gift. And um, 
I was really blown away by her thoughtfulness. Now, first of all, she had bought this, she said, for my birthday. It's a little needle keeper. It's a little tractor. Isn't that sweet? That looks like the little tractor on my podcast logo. So I thought that was awfully cute. Then she found this awesome space-based fabric, and she made me two project bags. But she also made me two pillowcases out of the same fabric. So I've got two space pillowcases now. Is that not awesome? So that was really cool. But the crowning glory of all of this, and I was really blown away by this, and I'll put them on where you can see. She found these mittens, and she is a bad mother knitter when it comes to color work. She can knit. Now, she made me look at them. Oh, it's the dippers. Turn them that way. It's the dippers. It's the little dipper pouring into the big dipper. Look at that. Woo! Something like that. Isn't that pretty? I love it. So those will be perfect to drive to work on cold days. I love that. Those They just feel so nice and they're so pretty. So thank you, Nancy. Those are gorgeous and you are a star. Those are amazing. So... Um, I'll show one last acquisition. Oh, you're going, God, shut up, please. Without comment. <laughs> oh, I saw the birds and I was like, I, I want it. So, we got another cross stitch kit. Okay. That's why we have Kidder Gitter done again next year. <laughs> anyway, so that's all the yarny content. So, now I'm going to move on and talk a little bit about science. Okay, so, um, yeah, so campus is starting to wind down for the end of the semester. We've got tomorrow is Friday, and then next week we've only got really one day because I'm not having labs on Tuesday because I've learned my lesson about trying to have labs Thanksgiving week. It's just not going to work. So, um, we have um, one day next week, and then we come back for two days, <laughs> and then we have finals. So things are starting to wind down. We've had student presentations and lab practicals and everything. We had Super Science Saturday. If you remember the last time I podcast, we were gearing up for that. And it was the best one we've ever done by far. It was the most amazing, best one, the best attended, the best, smoothest running. The ladies softball team came over and volunteered, SPS students, some students from the STEM Teach program, some students from the um, Campus Catholic Ministries came over, and st some students from the Chemical Society, Student Chemical Society came over. So we had great volunteers. We had a pyrotechnics display. It just it, it just went great. My students pulled it off together at the last minute. Well, not at the last minute, but they I had been sick that week. So they pulled it all together, and I took a bunch of pictures. So I'm going to put a little slideshow together at the end of this segment for you to see of all the, the cool things that were going on. Um, we finished our book group, as I mentioned. The Big Magic book group is over with for the semester. I'm so glad that I did it because the book... And I was talking with someone online. The book, a lot, you know, there were parts of it that were kind of like, uh, but then there were parts that really spoke to me. And I'm actually going to read two sections, two short paragraphs to you uh, for my final thoughts today. But this is an easy book to read. It is worth a read if you're needing some, I don't know, some insight into why it's okay to do what you, the things that you love to do. So I recommend it to you for that. Uh, it definitely gave me some motivation and insight about what I'm trying to do here on the farm. And maybe one day I'll do a video just talking about what my goals and visions are for what's going to happen here on the farm in the next 10 to 20 years. Um, so we did finish that. We're going to read Thrive by Ariana Huffington next semester, I think. And we're going to, I'm going to try to do it again. I have lab at the time that they're wanting to meet, but I also give take-home tests. So I said, if you'll give me the schedule, I schedule my test on the same time that we're supposed to meet. So that would be wonderful. Um, I've got a few students that were working on student recommendations. I have a, my student Grace is wanting to apply for a NASA internship and I really think she has a good chance of getting it and I've been helping her with her her uh, application essay and I wrote her a letter and all that stuff. It always makes me really proud to to support a good student like that. Um, I'm very I'm very happy happy to help that way and I've written several letters for um, some other students this semester as well. 
Um, had a, one of the best planetarium groups that I've ever had uh, in terms of their interactiveness. And I was kind of, you know, I'm kind of jaded when I see high school kids because sometimes the high school, if you're going to have a group that's probably going to act poorly, <laughs> it's generally high school kids because they, they're kind of over it. It's not cool to ask questions. It's not cool to be smart. You know, we live in an environment right now where it's not cool to be smart. And I'm like, let's make America smart again. How about so, uh, but this group was great. I was so blown away by the questions that they asked. I was really, really pleased, pleased with their questions. It went great um, for that. Um, again, I, I, you know, I've talked a little bit about uh, working on my diver teaching excellence diversity recognition track. I'm over three quarters of the way done with the requirements for it. I had my observation. My teaching observation people come in and watch and I'm going to meet with them um, they give you a letter but I ask if we could just meet and sit and talk about things too because I, I would I think that way I could get feedback um, and then I nominated one of my students for the Newman Civic Fellows Award um, because he is very involved on campus he's a non-traditional student I've talked about him before he's actually older than I am by a little bit and he's come back to school but he's very involved in the campus community and doing outreach he did a phenomenal he couldn't come to Super Science Saturday because he's a commercial pilot but he did a wonderful job on a workbook for the kids to take home uh, to redo the experiments and, uh, and teach them a little bit of science he is also heavily involved in the community he is a sponsor for uh, people in recovery and I think that that's amazing and he has been doing that for many years and he also is a mentor in his job for pilots as well so I, I felt very privileged to be able to nominate him and I've got a couple that's a national award through Campus Compact and uh, we have actually had a Newman Civic Fellow for the last four years from our campus so I hope that he gets chosen uh, for it. I know there's a lot of good students out there, but I really felt like he's a strong candidate. Um, and then um, I, I'm also nominating some of my students for the Campus Service Learning Awards as well, because I definitely think that they have earned it. They have either participated in Super Science Saturday before they were students, or they participated after they were students, and they're heavily involved in service activities on campus, so I think they deserve that recognition. So, uh, that's kind of, it's been a lot, you know, going on lately at work, trying to get the semester wound down and trying to get things done. Um, I actually applied to be a reviewer for the National Science Foundation's Graduate Fellowships Award. Uh, they were, they put out a call needing more a astronomy and astrophysics reviewers. And so I put in my application and was accepted. So I actually have to do the web training for that on December 1st or the 9th, or I think it's the 9th. Uh, I have to do the web training for that um, so that I can be a reviewer for the NSF awards. And I wanted to do it because I have students that I want to apply for it. And I thought if I could kind of see what the expectation level was, I could mentor them better in writing their applications. So, uh, yeah, that's been the whirlwind that has been uh, campus this uh, here lately since we last visited we're off next week except for Monday, and Monday will be just a half day for me. I've decided because, I, again, as I mentioned, Vanessa's coming into town. I want to make sure things are ready here so it looks halfway decent. <laughs> I'm planning on spending the weekend cleaning house, and I've got to clean rabbit cages and do some mowing and stuff. I need to do that anyway, but having company come, oh boy, you can get more house cleaning done when you know you've got company coming in, in an hour than you did in five weeks. So, but anyway, so uh, Miss Shirley had requested some time back um, for me to talk about the Santa Ana winds because of the terrible California wildfires. And uh, Jessica had actually asked me to talk about CRISPR, the DNA editing technology. And I need to do some more studying up on that, Jessica, but I hadn't forgot you because uh, that's not my area of expertise. I have been watching a couple of videos about it, but I'm still not comfortable enough yet to talk about it. But I am comfortable enough to talk about Santa Ana winds. So, uh, the Santa Ana winds are um, very dry, hot winds that are a local wind to Southern California. And so, um, they are what are responsible for pushing those fires and making the fires there so deadly and devastating. They, um, 
originate from the Great Basin. So I'm gonna put a little graphic up here to kind of show you. Um, and I'm gonna link a video down below in the sh in the discuss in the show information about this. The Santa Anas originate when there is a high pressure system sort of over California or even um, out into the Pacific. And high pressure systems in the northern hemisphere circulate clockwise. So what happens is that air comes down off the Great Basin. It's at higher elevation there, so it's cool. And cool air cannot hold on to moisture. Cool air will deposit any moisture that it has. Then what happens is, as it comes down off the Great Basin, it hits the San Gabriel Mountains, and it's pushed up and over those. So any moisture it had is now gone. Then the geography of Southern California with the different canyons that are there, and there's several different uh, big canyons like Cajon Canyon and so on. And I watch the show numbers and these places are like, oh, they talk about that on there. Those things act like just tunnels for these winds. So these winds come down, they're called catabatic winds. Um, which I, it means flowing downhill. It's Greek for flowing downhill, but catabatic winds, the, um, the Chinook winds in the Great Plains are also catabatic winds. They tend to be hot and dry or warm and dry because they're coming down off of a higher elevation. So they're increasing in pressure, they're increasing in temperature, and because of the geography, they're speeding up. So these winds can reach speed, gusting speeds of 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, especially in those canyons, and that just fans any flames that are there. It dries out the vegetation, and then any, if a fire gets started, it just just it explodes, basically, when the Santa Anas hit it. Santa Anas blow off the Great Basin and out into the Pacific Ocean, so there's actually some satellite imagery um, showing, and I can put a picture of it here, showing the... Um, the um, smoke from the fires in, in Southern California blowing out over the Pacific Ocean. Um, I've watched footage of those fires. That would be terrifying to me if I were out there. It's like a fire hurricane, almost. Um, so, the, and, the, and we're talking about like temperature changes from, you know, these winds can be when they're at upper elevations, they can be in the 40s. And by the time they get down into, you know, around L.A. and Southern California, they're in the 90s. So that's very drying to any underbrush or any tender vegetation that might have happened during the rainy season. And so it just fans those flames. So they're called the Santa Anas. Um, let me see if I can remember. I jotted down why they're called that somewhere. Um, let's see. Oh, they're still grumping about the thing. Uh, it was derived from Santa Ana Canyon in Orange, California. They really don't know exactly where the wind name came from, but they think that that's probably um, where the name came from. So um, they also sometimes are called devil winds, and so they say it could be a corruption of the word, the Spanish word for Satan. <laughs> so devil winds because they do fan these flames. Um, so, anyway, so, uh, that's, that's the Santa Ana winds, Miss Shirley. It's just like the Chinook winds over the Great Plains. They're a local wind that happens because of the unique geography. And if you get the right weather conditions over California, you get them. And so, and then if there's fire that gets started, it just, it's bad. So, um, yeah. The other thing that I wanted to talk about, one of my students was doing a presentation about, the Manhattan Project, and was talking about Otto Hahn and how Otto Hahn discovered nuclear fission. Now, Otto Hahn was a German scientist, and in the 30s, he was working on a nuclear program for the Nazis. Um, well, he was working on nuclear physics. Let's that, back up. He was working on nuclear physics, and he was working with uh, Robert, Otto, Robert, Otto Frisch and Lise Meitner. Now, Lise Meitner was an Austrian, was Austrian, and she was Jewish. And when the Nuremberg Laws went into play in Germany because of the Nazis coming to power, she saw the writing on the wall and left. But she was instrumental in understanding the uh, mechanisms that were going on for nuclear fission. Now, um, what happened was, because she left, 
she was a physics professor and a department head actually at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin until the Nazis came to power and she left and went to Sweden and um, eventually moved and became a lecturer at Cambridge in England uh, where she actually died at age 89 but she worked with looking at these heavy elements and how they could split and make smaller elements and they realized that this mechanism was fission. It was fissioning the large elements into smaller ones and it was releasing a tremendous amount of energy. So they, you know, fission was the basis of the atom bombs, uh, which the U.S. dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They're also the, fission is also the basis for nuclear power plants as well. But she did not, she, neither she nor Frisch were even mentioned in the awarding of the Nobel Prize. Um, Otto Hahn went, received the uh, sole award for the 1944 Nobel Prize in Chemistry, and he never acknowledged their help. Some people say it's because she was Jewish and he didn't want to jeopardize her safety. Some people say it's because she was a woman and he didn't want to acknowledge her. I don't know what the answer to that is. I have, but, but some people say the Nobel Committee didn't really understand how to award collaborative work, and that's bull, because one of the very first Nobel Prizes in chemistry went to Henry Becquerel, Pierre, and Marie Curie. So don't tell me they didn't understand that. They won a joint award for uh, un discovering radioactivity. So please don't tell me a lie. <laughs> Let's be honest about why she didn't get it. How about, let's not say that. Uh, and in fact, Marie Curie wasn't even going to get the award until Pierre said, oh yes, she is too, because she played just as big a role. Gotta love the good old boy network, right? But anyway, hopefully things are changing. They're not completely there, but they're, they are changing. But Lies Meitner was one of the, she won a lot of awards, and she was actually invited to attend um, the Nobel laureate meeting and laureate meeting in 1962 and speak. So it's sort of been tacitly acknowledged by the community that she definitely deserved the Nobel Prize, um, but she didn't get it. I mean, and and she, but she did win many many awards um, over her lifetime, um, and and even received many posthumous awards after she passed away in 1968. So, Lee's Meitner is someone you need to know. Uh, you should know who she is, especially if you're talking about nuclear physics. Um, so, I wrote a little note in my student's paper. I said, hey, look up Lee's Meitner. Um, but anyway, so that's where we're going to end with our science segment. I had another piece, but I'll save it to talk about next time. So, uh, that's where we're going to end with science. And now we're going to move on and talk about farm life. <music> Okay, okay, so farm is, um, well, as I mentioned, we had some super cold temperatures a couple of weeks ago, so that was a lot of prep work, getting everybody bedded down and ready for that, but everybody came through that just fine, uh, including Yard Bunny, who seems to have no interest in being a captive bunny anymore, and 
So as long as she's happy, I'm leaving food and water out for her, and she's just hopping around the yard, and the cats seem to enjoy seeing her, so. Um, but anyway, everybody's doing good. Um, Penny is going up in the coop at night with the chickens, and that she makes pretty good guardian animals, so that's good. I have had issues with Joe the donkey. Um, I got a very aggravated phone call from my neighbor saying that he, the donkey, was out over in his food plot for his deer hunting. I'm like, okay. So I went over there and I called him and I found a trail and I'm pretty sure that that's where he'd been going through. So I fixed the hole in the fence. Thought everything was fine. Last Friday, I had gone in last Friday for my first, because I've turned 50, colonoscopy. Everything was fine. Everything was good. It was all fine. But that evening, I'm, you know, sitting there, and, you know, after having sedation, you're, I mean, I wasn't really out of it, but I was just tired. And I get a phone call. This donkey is still out, blah, blah, blah. He's going to eat my trees. And I'm like, I had no way of knowing he was still out because he was coming in to eat every evening. So I assumed he was staying up. I drove up and looked at the hole in the fence. Nothing had been touched. It was just like I had fixed it. So the only thing that I can think of is that he is getting out behind the house. So I have put all the minis back up by the house uh, like I used to keep them up. I, I've, I'd only let them out to enjoy the grass. So I've got them up now. And I'm probably going to keep them up all winter because we are having problems with feral hogs. And I had a hole in my cattle fence where a tree had fallen and had taken out about a 20-foot section of fence. And I was over there looking it over, and my friends Tim and Jason came up and helped me fix it. But the first day that I was over there looking, I kept hearing things moving around out in the woods. And I heard grunting. And I thought, you are up here by yourself with no gun out in these woods. Oh, here goes the hallelujah chorus. Maybe they're done. Not quite. <laughs> Are you cold, little buddy? Okay. So, as I had said, I'm out there in the woods <laughs> hearing noises that are not deer because it's too big, thinking, oh boy, I've really done it. Because I had walked a fairly far distance into the woods to look at this fence line, and I don't have any kind of pistol or anything with me. And that wasn't smart because we have a we have a mountain lion up here and we have the hogs. Although, as Tim pointed out, he said, you know, unless you get one cornered, it's probably not going to do anything to you. And I'm like, well, my only concern is what if I walk up a fence line and mama hog is over here and baby hogs are over here and she thinks I'm after them. So um, that was a little bit of a wake up call for me. But um, that's why I'm going to start leaving the minis up because I do have the one that doesn't see well and I have a couple that are... Um, that have some stiffness and lameness issues. So I'm just going to start leaving them up. Um, except for Pumpkin, who hangs out with the horses anyway. She would not, you know, she could not dare lower herself to hang out with donkeys and miniature horses. She hangs out with big horses. Thank you very much. So, but anyway, um, so we did get the donkey stopped. We did get the cows stopped going out. So, um, all is all is well right now. Um, I've got to do some fence work behind the house before I let the donkey. I probably will keep the donkeys up, as I said, all winter. And then I'll try uh, the fence again in the spring. My only concern is the neighbor has planted a bunch of chestnut trees. I've never had the donkeys offer to bother any of my trees. But my luck would be that he would bother one of theirs. So let's, it's just easier to be an angel in heaven. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I did post a little short video of shorty video of flag practice. It's just the raw footage of us doing a run through on the flag routine for Christmas. And of course, we'll have the Christmas talent show and I'll include that in my Vlogmas uh, episode. So I hope you'll join me for Vlogmas. Vlogmas is not everybody's cup of tea, I know, but a lot of people say they really like it. So I'm looking forward to do it, doing it again. Uh, I planted my trees. I ordered, they, they had cancel my order for one of the, the apple trees i guess they didn't have it they ran out of them or they something happened to them and then the blackberry canes that i had ordered are back ordered until springtime but i planted 
another apple tree, a pear tree, a plum tree, a, a Asian persimmon tree, and a cherry tree, a sour cherry tree. Cherry trees don't do so good here because of the heat, so I planted it in a place where it would be protected from everything, but early from morning sun and from about one o'clock or two o'clock on in the afternoon it would be shaded so i'm hoping that that will encourage it to do okay uh, i ordered some cranberry bushes they had a sale stark brothers had a sale on american cranberries which don't require being in a bog they're just a low ground cover type bush and they're supposed to be easy they're supposed to be okay in my zone again there's something that don't like a lot of heat so i'm going to have to consider where i plant them so they'll get a little bit of protection I may have to use shade cloth or something on them uh, one of my big plans over christmas break is i'm going to build build a whole bunch of raised beds to do my garden in because i really don't need all this yard i have a pretty large yard and it is just wasted space it is just something that has to be mowed it is not serving a purpose and so i'm going to eventually plant as much as i can edible wise or or native plants for the birds and the pollinators um around my yard my next thing that i want to get i want to order some more apple another apple tree that was back ordered and i want to order a mulberry tree although i have a little volunteer mulberry out here but i want to i want to get some nut trees and i want to order a ginkgo i love ginkgos i think they're really pretty and they are native to arkansas so um yeah so we got that and then um one of the things i want to work on over christmas break is again i want to expand the coop area i've got it got it started but i need to finish up uh putting the panels up for, so the the tree the big pen where the chickens have a little bit more room i did finally buy me a fridge my fridge has been dead for a month and that's been a, a pain but i simply just did not have the time to go up and look i did some looking online and i went up and ordered or bought one it's supposed to be delivered on saturday so i'm very excited about that um, as I mentioned, I had my checkups. I, I, you know, it was a kind of a silly, silly week. And I, uh, Maria sent me a picture of Katie Couric saying, how do you prep for a colonoscopy on Friday? You have a mammogram on Wednesday. And that's exactly what I did. I had my mammogram on Wednesday and I had a colonoscopy on Friday. <laughs> but everything was good. Everything was clear. Everything was good. I got my report back from the Keep the Beat program. My arteries are all good my heart rhythm is good so i am healthy person that's that's exciting i like i like that so um yeah so that's kind of what that's about i've been riding as i mentioned i've been riding flame a, a bit Bo is doing really good too flame and i are really starting to click i'm so glad now getting her to canter is so much easier and i'm not scared anymore and we're just able to go and have a good time riding so that's been really enjoyable uh, i'm still spending time with gusty although i haven't been riding her as much um the, the little girl madison has been riding her over at the barn and they get along really good and as i mentioned we're getting ready for our christmas program so i'm looking for some music i think i'm going to use antiphony's version of the solstice carol to do a dressage test too so we'll see how that works out. I don't know. We'll have to, I'll have to see if I can get the, the, the timing right on that. But um, we, we missed practice tonight because it is raining here. Uh, that's why I'm doing this. At, it's Well, after dark with the time change, it gets dark at 2, 8, 2 p.m. It feels like. I know that's not true. But it, like right now, it is 6 o'clock and it feels like midnight. <laughs> so I am not a fan of the time change. But whatever. So, anyway, so the, uh, that's what's going on. I saw a really cool article about making paper out of invasive plants. So, I talked with Sasha about maybe doing an owl's workshop on that. Because, like with owls, she likes to do some educational stuff. So, invasive species would be great. And then, make paper. So, I'm going to try making paper over Christmas break. Because I surely have got enough weeds out of there to do it with. Uh, I've been trying to do a little bit of yard cleaning up, but on the same, on the other hand, I like letting have the the bugs having a place to overwinter. Um, so that's been that's been you know kind of kind of a trade off there. Uh, I decided I wasn't going to deer hunt this year. I'm just not feeling it. I went and I went and sat out there a few days, and it just. I've got meat in the freezer right now, so it's not a question of needing it for survival. My friend Tim did get a deer, and he is going to give me the meat off of it, so uh, I'll get to pick that up. So I'll be well stocked between the beef that I have and the pork, and if I get that deer, I'll be, be very well stocked for winter, and I won't have to worry about that. The generator's running great. 
no problems there. We did have a power outage. We had some wind after all that cold came through. We had a night where there were like these wind gusts that were 30, 40, 50 miles an hour and it took some trees down. So I was actually lost power at the hat. My, my area lost power. Boy, that generator came on and that was music to my ears. So I'm really pleased about that. Um, I lost my fuel cap off my tractor when I was sick with hand, foot, and mouth. I went out there to try to feed and I was hurting really bad. My feet were burning, my hands were hurting, and I needed to check the fuel in my tractor. And there's something wrong with the electronics and it's been this way for years. Electrical's messed up where I have to stick the fuel tank. And y'all saw me do that on uh, Vlogmas, I know. Well, I sticked it, it was fine. I don't know what I did with that fuel filler cap. I don't know. I think I probably left it on the running board and I looked and I looked and I looked and I couldn't find it. And so I was putting Coke bottle, cutting the end off of Coke bottle and putting that over. And I was doing first one thing, then another. Well, the other day when I was out planting my trees, I was walking off to see if I could fit an apple tree and I counted off my steps and I looked down and there was my fuel filler cap. <laughs> yes. So it is back on the tractor. I did not have to buy one. I was very happy about that. So that is good. That is good news. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much what's going on on the farm here. Um, we've got our um, wreath making party that'll be coming up in December. I'll have I'll be doing Vlogmas again this year. So hopefully y'all can hang with me through that. Um, I did make some citrus jelly. We had some oranges and ap oranges and lemons and limes that we used for Super Science Saturday to do batteries out of. And we they had bought bags and they were still good. They just had, you know, pieces of wire stuck in them. There was nothing wrong with them. So I brought them home and made citrus jelly and then took the peels and put them in vinegar to use for cleaning solutions. So I've got those soaking in vinegar right now for cleaner and then I've got the the jelly I made I think I ended up with like 10 half pints of jelly citrus jelly so it's a beautiful orange color I should have brought a jar back here to show you guys and I forgot it but anyway so yep that's that's kind of what's going on just wind headed toward the holidays looking forward to getting to meet Vanessa and her family in person next Tuesday I'll get to hopefully get a little bit of footage of that but I want to enjoy their company more than I want to video everything so uh, anyway I oh Willie are you all right he's taking a nap down here he says it's dark and cold mama it's not that cold but it's dark and it's time for bed he thinks the animals don't like the time change either but anyway so that's it for farm life right now so we're going to move on and finish with a few final thoughts Okay, as I mentioned, we had read the book Big Magic uh, for this group, and I missed one week because I was I, I was contagious and I didn't want people to get uh, hand, foot, and mouth. But there was a section in that part that she is talking about writing and how she viewed writing as a creative pursuit or as a passion. And it really resonated with me because it made me, if I replaced writing with, this land it would make sense to describe how I feel about my farm so I wanted to share that with you and then I wanted to share the last part of the book with you because I think it really is a beautiful and inspiring piece so let me read this section to you really quick so this is in the section called uh, persistence the book is broken up into different sections if you're not familiar with it it's uh, broken up into sections called um, courage enchantment permission persistence and trust and then the last one is called divinity so this is in the section called persistence and it's talking about her love for writing and how she sort of courted writing and the creative aspect of her life and so it really made it really speaks to my concept of being tied to this land or being a steward of this land so um, I'll read it but as I'm thinking in my mind I'm replacing writing with farming so uh, okay so she said uh, nor did I give myself any okay let me start back here okay I made vows she made vows to writing and she said my vows were strangely sp specific and I would still argue pretty realistic I didn't make a promise that I would be a successful writer because I sensed that success was not under my control nor did I promise that I would be a great writer because I didn't know if I could be great. 
nor did I give myself any time limits for the work. Like, if I'm not published by the time I'm 30, I'll give up on this dream and go find another line of work. In fact, I did not put any conditions or restrictions on my path at all. My deadline was never. Instead, and this is where it hits home to me, instead, I simply vowed to the universe that I would write forever regardless of the result. I promised that I would try to be brave about it and grateful and as uncomplaining as I could possibly be. I also promised that I would never ask writing to take care of me financially, but that I would always take care of it meaning that I would always support us both by any means necessary. I did not ask for any external rewards for my devotion. I just wanted to spend my life as near to writing as possible, forever close to that source of all my curiosity and contentment. And so I was willing to make whatever arrangements needed to be made in order to get by. And that is how I feel about this land. So that really hit home to me and it made me really snap into place about how, and, and I think that's why I feel so energized now as I've sort of come to this place in my farm life where I never expected this farm to take care of me. It's just not financially possible. Um, but that I would always promise to take care of it. So that really, really hit home to me. So, I want to read this last part for all of our, our, us creative souls out there because I think it is really important. Creativity is sacred, and it is not sacred. We all make matters enormously, and it doesn't matter what, oh, excuse me, let me start over. Creativity is sacred, and it, it is not sacred. What we make matters enormously, and it doesn't matter at all. We toil alone, and we are accompanied by spirits. We are terrified, and we are brave. Art is a crushing chore and a wonderful privilege. Only when we are at our most playful can divinity finally get serious with us. Make space for all these paradoxes to be equally true inside your soul, and I promise you can make anything. So please calm down now and get back to work, okay? The treasures that are hidden inside you are hoping you will say yes. So what do you need to say yes to? What is it that you've been waiting for permission to do or waiting until you're more professional. I had an idea for a workshop for Mystic South and I was too afraid to put it out there. And lo and behold, that idea went somewhere else and found someone who was a little bit more brave than me and that's probably okay. But what do you need to say yes to? What do you see need is what does your creativity need? You know, what what have you been holding back because you're afraid? Do me a favor. Try saying yes, just a little bit, just once, and see what happens. Okay? All right. So until I see y'all again, Willie, you gonna wake up and tell him bye, son? Oh, him like, I'm sleepy, mama. So until I see y'all again, y'all be good to each other and take care of each other. And what, Willie? Oh, he's not excited. <laughs> Peace out, y'all. Bye. Oh, he's tired.